Close the ball. Hello there. Hello there. Hi. Hey guys, welcome to Dungeon Discourse, where we're gonna be talking about all things Dungeon Select related. Um, oh, yeah. With today, we're gonna be talking about last episode of Dungeon Select, of course. We're also gonna quickly go over the one shots that we did uh, yesterday, which was a lot of fun. And um, I wanna get into Vincent's character a little bit, since, you know, yeah, Vincent. Yeah, yeah. We got Vincent and we got Koiba, or we got Koiba twice, or we got Vincent twice, whatever, whatever way you want to fucking put it. Mm. We discovered that they are literally twins. <laughs> uh, separated birth. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking I'm about I'm all I'm kinds I'm of things. <laughs> all kinds of things. Which one's which? I don't know. It's hard. We're, it's hard fucking, to we're fucking synchronized. It's a good thing that we have the nameplates on stream, or else nobody could tell yeah. the difference. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> first things first, we are still raising money for charity, of course. Uh, yesterday, um, the like D and D incentives did, were, did really well, and we raised like about, about like another. I think we're close to thirteen hundred now for charity select, which is awesome. Insane. Um, but first things first, we're gonna start off with some announcements. Uh, let me quickly whip out my cheat sheet. Um, next Wednesday, at uh, uh, the seventeenth of November, at uh, the usual DS time, so two p.m. Eastern, uh, eight p.m. Central European time, we're going to be doing another one shot. Um, the players have been decided. It's going to be Duke, Opti, Hunter Omega, and Hallucin. Oh, nice. and we're going to be running a one shot that is called uh, Frick. I forgot the name. Hold. What a one shot name that is. That's insane. Yo, dude, what's the name like... of one shot, real quick, bro? <clears throat> Did I put it in the fucking Discord? I, maybe I didn't. I don't even fucking know anymore. Frick, I forgot. Something about treasure. Uh, wait, hold on. I got this, boys. Don't worry. I right. got it. Agent Pirate Treasure, says Duke. Yeah, it is. You're going to be, you're, the, the party is going to be chasing after, like, this, like, legendary. It's called Shore of Dreams. Shore of Dreams. Uh, I picked it up on DM's Guild for three buckaroos. Ta tapped into the dungeon's, like, budgets, and uh, we could afford it, so thank God. Um, three bucks? Yeah. Well, Riches beyond the imagination awaits. Bur buried decades ago, the great treasure of notorious captain Jade Scale is waiting at the Mist Cliff. Hell yeah! Mm. Is it like be... an ocean based? Like it's like a it's like a like a piratey type uh, vibe. Mm. So you're you yeah, know, the party's love... on on, on in an area tracking down this this legendary pirate treasure, and um, you know can they unearth the secrets of Captain Jade Scale or will they be undone by its mystery? Ooh, say uh, adventure for characters level five to seven. So I told them, hey, make a level six character for next week. It's going to be a good ass time. And obviously, next week, uh, the same incentives will apply as uh, yesterday's. So, a bunch of, you know, at the minimum donation of five pounds to put just a random gameplay thing into effect. So, I, some examples that were used yesterday was giving people advantage, disadvantage, inspiration. Uh, we had some wild magic surges happen because of charity donation. Oh. We had nice. um, some rocks falling from the ceiling damaging enemies we had extra enemies being added to the fight mid fight all kinds of cool stuff um yeah. it's a good ass time it's a good ass time so um yeah next week next Monday. uh monday also um yeah and i told everyone that if they want to donate a thousand pounds they can just add a tarask to the fucking one shot there you go guys it's, it's out there <laughs> um and poison too right fem that, that you were a victim of <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I've read through the module a little bit. It looks like a lot of fun. Uh, Monday, Divinity returns after being on a two-week hiatus because of uh, several reasons. I was busy and also uh, we missed one because of the, the kickoff for, for the charity event. We all did some golfing together and all that stuff. So, But this Monday, we'll be back at it with the Divinity playthrough. Um, also, we have a Discord now, guys. Exclamation mark Discord. Join the official Dungeon Select Discord. Talk about all things D&D. &D. Um, does, it's, you don't have to, you know, be a Dungeon Select fan to, uh, to, to, to join it. Anything D&D &D related, if you're looking for people to play or set up games with or discuss other D&D campaigns that the community watches, like, for instance, Critical Role or, um, Play Dicely is a, is a community fan favorite as well. Um... All that good stuff, check it out. But yes, without any further ado, 
last episode of Dungeon Select called Broken Bonds. Some, uh, it got, it got a little, it got a little, ooh, you know, some party members had some, had some issues with each other. Um, you know, trust came, came out to play and uh, a lot of, some, some people's loss of said, um, you know, loss of said trust. Which caused a lot of interesting roleplay. We also, um, the preparation for the next adventure that seems to be taking the party towards Streatham to deal with uh, Jirden Fearkrag, which is also where our, our new friend Sai comes in because he's been running an investigation for the Kalzir's adventurers uh, under the authority of General Kron. And, uh, you know, Sai joining the party for the time being to uh, to take care of this threat together, because why not? Looking forward to it. It's going to be a fun, yeah, like, like story arc. I have some I have some fun things in the works. And obviously, you know, me and Vincent know, you know, Sai's got some 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 backstory and some things that, that may There's or may not things. come up, you know? Imagine sure. having a backstory. Um, <laughs> Which so, me this time? It's, it's yeah. I mean, your your backstory also come up a little bit, right? Which be me? Which be me? Um. So, first things first. Uh, Vincent, I have a question for you. Right, uh, being me. being a guest in our in our campaign, what was your experience like like so far? Like the first session under your belt? I mean, it was it was. I loved it. Honestly, I loved it. I was stressed <laughs> beforehand. Okay. Because like first sessions are always. I was talking to Koib about this. First sessions always a bit rough. Because like you, there's the voice. You have to. Try and get into it, get into like the the mannerisms of speaking and shit like that. And um, yeah, I, I other than that, like other than that kind of stress, I was good. I was I was had a great time. I loved awesome. it. Good, 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 good. Um, Koiba. hello, that's me. You uh got any anything about last session that you're like, oh, that's I, I mean, thought that was really interesting, or like just I a mean, general opinion? It was, it was, I mean, it was fucking cool. Like. Super cool RP, like oh, the RP has been so fucking good these past like two, three weeks. Like the RP has been so fucking good, and it's so nice. Like, I mean, I had like a part palpitations when I was being turned to stone. <laughs> that was fantastic. Yeah, like, I got uh, fucking D &D. Gorgons, I fucking love dude. D. I fucking love D and D, but man, does it make me? It makes me feel, and I'm like, I mean, it's good. That means you're into it. You know what I mean? That's yeah, that's awesome. how much the. I'm like, I hate it. I love it because it makes you feel things. I hate it because it also makes you just like want to curl <laughs> up and be like. <laughs> yeah, man. I uh, Gorgons. Obviously, when oh, I read fuck. Gorgon, I was like, oh, you know, is this like Indeed. Greek mythology, like like Medusa type type shit? But no, but no, Gorgons in D and D are these like metal bull monsters War. that will just petrify yeah. you with their fucking green. Those things are terrifying. Vapor and I um I I was just like okay. The way I put that thing together was just, I was like, okay, they're going to be traveling for three days. Maybe one and a half if Jax gets lucky with his map thing. So I wanted yeah. there to be like a combat encounter. And I wanted there to be a combat encounter in the first session with, with Vincent being there as well. So that the party yeah. immediately has an idea of, you know, like combat wise, what's the, what does the character do and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just literally, I, I was like, okay, with uh, the backstory in mind of, of Sai, him, him being... A ranger with like you know specialized in taking down creatures bigger than him i was like okay i'm looking for like a large like monstrosity of some kind so i just literally i just googled large monstrosities 5e went down yeah. a list and saw gorgons and i was like oh are those like medusas question mark and then i was like no because medusas are called Med like medusa it's, is a monster in it's a mon the, it's yeah it's a monster is, is what we know as gorgons from like greek, greek yeah. mythology you know like women snake hair petrifying cunts yeah. Uh, so I was like, oh, what, what is that? And I saw an image of this, like, metal bull. And I was like, dude, that's badass. They're going to fight that. And then yeah. I read into it and, like, uh, they either live underground or in tropical parts of the world. I'm like, oh, well, we're on a fucking uh, continent filled with jungles. That's pretty tropical. Fuck it. Yeah, they're going to... That kind of set it, it up. Works out, it works so, out. It works out. Works out very well. It was fucking... And, um, yeah, that fight got scary for... Uh, watching... I was, so, I, I was stressing watching... <laughs> <laughs> literally fight. of all the like place for me to stood i was thinking i gotta be in the middle of them oh i'm far away this is good i'm like in the good middle <laughs> spot and i was like you're, like you're yeah. in the middle huh I was like yeah yeah so Wonk. all fucking 30 foot cones would be yeah, able just to get you just about. i was like, like oh 
Fuck. <laughs> just had this time, moment, like, like, obviously, I was like happy that you didn't get petrified yeah. the first time. I was like, okay, he, yeah. he fought through it on the second save. Yeah. He's good. And then I was like, second ball is going to do funny. the same thing. Oh, a Lazarin is going to do that as well, yeah. huh? That's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, Man, that casting... I would have, I would have loved to have seen what the party would have done if the party would have turned around and like mm -hmm. gone back to Eldalon, gotten like, you know, the head clerics would go to clerics somewhere in the temple districts. Either like either bought me along as this really fucking heavy. I'd be like, you're too heavy to carry. We'll find you again in a second, and they're like, or just be like, this guy's fucking done, and just go. Like, <laughs> it'd been interesting to see. Like, don't get me wrong, both are very viable options and i like mm -hmm. i would like at this level someone being petrified it's like that is you know that's character death like that yeah. is that character over. yeah at this level especially because like um petrification in general is really hard to get fixed yeah. in D D. Oh, right, just, just greater registration yeah right? greater registration yeah. or like it's happen to have you know find there's there's potions that like or like a right. wish spell <laughs> yeah <laughs> i guess but like yeah, yeah, good luck. Good luck. It's a slightly, me. slightly higher level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is, I think, there is like canon, like five e, uh, like potion or some sort mm -hmm. of like thing that you can buy, that is to counteract I think, petrification. Yeah, I think it's like basilisk blood. No. Uh, yeah, sure, I like think that. I think that might be like an ingredient of said potion. Yeah. But like there is like a there's a cure that isn't just mm -hmm. a spell, but that would be very very expensive. Let me let me tell you. Yeah. Let me tell you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it would have very much been a case of, yeah. fuck. Do we just? I've I, I've been interested to see what the pilot had done. It'd been very interesting to see but if the pilot luckily, would have pushed on. Luckily, none of that matters. That luckily. that level <laughs> that fucking higher level casted bless was Recasting bless was yeah, a sick. fucking yeah. godsend. Yeah. Literally, literally was the godsend in yeah. like so yeah. many ways. The fact I rolled, like, I saw eight come up the dice, I was like, shit. Like, because I, well, I rolled the default at the same time, so I was like, okay, that's 12. What's my plus five? Okay, 13. I'm like, maybe it's 11 DC. And you're like, oh, the DC's 30. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> I had to roll that perfect. <laughs> Fuck, yeah, yeah, apart from the that. the last time you saved from it, you rolled exactly the DC, right? I'm pretty sure. I rolled the first time I saved from it, which would have been like, which attempt two was 13. Yeah. And then right. the second time when I saved from, I got 15 because I rolled right. a 13 on the dice. So I was like, okay. Right, 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 right. I remember I you one. saying like, I'm good. I'm good. As soon as you saw yeah, I got 13. 13. I'm like, I got pluses. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, with yeah. a plus four. Yeah, I rolled the exact DC <laughs> with a plus four from that. Fucking like, hell. I had to have upcast. Yeah, and it, if like, you would have fucked that up, you would have been, that was the second tra time that, was the second in that for yeah. first yeah. one. Yeah, it was yeah, bad. Yeah. It was bad. Fucked. It was bad. Yeah. Bless coming in clutch, dude. Um, Vincent. Yes. Uh, obviously, you know we met in a in a role play environment. We we were playing GTA RP uh, on the same mm -hmm. server, and that's when we bumped into you. Uh, so obviously, I knew like, okay, this guy likes role playing. He's good at it. He knows what he's, he knows what he's doing. Uh, we played a little D and D, um, like a little less than a year ago. We tried to start up a little campaign, and then that kind of fell apart. Um. What is your like? You know, take us through your your like D and D career, so to say. Like, when when was the first time you played? What a like, what experience do you have? Okay. Um. Well, the first time I played was when I was like in school, like thirteen ish. But like, we we didn't know what we were doing. The guy who was DMing was just doing whatever the fuck, not following the rules. We were just <clears throat> messing around, and it kind of we kind of played like three or four times and that was it and then I haven't played this since and then I think the it was Critical Role actually that got me well, I watched a lot I got into that watched a lot of it and then a bunch of my friends just started getting super interested in D&D &D and started DMing and all that shit so a bunch more campaigns showed up for me and mm -hmm. I joined in and it was a lot more entertaining than when we had no idea what the hell we were doing <laughs> but yeah so um, I've not actually been playing D&D that long it's, I'd say, for the last three, four years. Okay. But that's it. Yeah, I'm like, Basically, when I, think... I moved to Paris is basically when I started, like, everyone around me started playing D&D, &D and okay. I just joined in. And yeah. I don't regret it at all. Good. Yeah, no, basically, same. Like, Critical Role got me into D&D, &D, and then that. I played a couple times, and I was like, dude, I used to write, like, short fantasy stories back in high school. I want to write... I like writing, 
it's like a very it's a big like creative outlet for me whenever i'm like like brain going mad i'll just fucking start writing dumb fantasy shit that's as kind of like a coping mechanism back in the day and i was like dude yeah i can pick that back up and have other people experience it that'd be kind of cool it's so being after, able like, to playing, share that shit that yeah. is so good so like after like playing tw two or three times i was like i i think i want to try dming um and the next thing you knew you know like dungeon select happened and here we are <laughs> here we are doing this yeah. stuff um and it's been a really fucking fun ride met a lot of people through it and uh dude now we get to fucking get all the homies on board like yourself very cool indeed indeed D, &D is lit guys all right if there's any any doubts remains in your mind D, D is dope and if you disagree then yeah um obviously i i had a hand in the character creation of of sai indeed um i'm trying to like without you know spoiling anything what made you decide on on the character that you have created it's like personality wise uh race class combo okay um I don't know, but the way I make my D&D &D characters is always at the... I start with having absolutely no idea and wanting to try everything. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I end up... I think what I usually do first is uh, I choose a um, class and then roll stats and then choose a race after that. Okay. And... So yeah, this time I just I don't know. I, I like trying things. Always doing. I've never. I don't think I've ever played the same like ra combination of of like class and subclass twice. I don't think I've ever played anything. I always want to do something different, just so I can experience like different uh, different classes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. I just thought that melee melee ranger. I thought that was cool. I really like the giant uh, giant killer. Uh, what was it called? Like the the archetype or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that I really I really like that. And I just honestly like it's just randomly comes into my mind just thinking of like at work, just thinking of cool things that could be a character, and I just thought of packing it there. Those, packing those chocolates. Yeah, and Ganassi had nothing to do like choosing an Ganassi had nothing to do with. Uh, Kiss or anything like that. It was just mm -hmm. I thought Ganassis were super fucking cool, and I was like, yes. I'm doing this guy. Ganassi are, are very cool. Yeah, and then obviously, um, it's going to be it's interesting because Kes as a character, I don't think has had many encounters with other Ganassi, really, because Ganassi are pretty rare creatures. Yeah. Um, so to see two air Ganassi kind of like randomly, you know, fate intertwines them because you're both on the same mission now. I'm very curious and excited to see what that what those interactions are going to be like, you know, throughout However many episodes yeah. we're going to have. I mean, Sai, Sai is super interested in Kess. Because obviously, there's like it's you don't see other Ergonasi every day. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh. So he's he's super interested in just seeing uh, how how like she is, what, what kind of person she is, and things like that. Hell yeah. Quite about what does Elazrin think of Sai so far? Just oh, out of curiosity. Oh, Lesbian he doesn't know what to think almost. He doesn't have like a, such a formulated opinion. He appreciate it's almost a weird like appreciates what he's doing from a like a law standpoint that like he's investigating these people that like Lesbian Lesbian feels quite invested in this like investigation, especially from like the people he's found and kind of like arrested and stuff like that. So he's kind of got a I know it's a weird in his mind like bond of like hey we're both like you're like actually investigating it you know you get those people like that plucky like I'm not a detective but like Hi, I'm here and I'm I'm detecting with you it's that like <laughs> <laughs> but like as a person he thinks he's pretty mysterious pretty quiet he I know it, it's kind of he likes people who are a bit more quieter I think as he is a quite a loud person and talkative he has a respect for those who kind of just like don't say much it's like one of the reasons why i like Steigen so much like especially <laughs> like cross as well speak all right dude. literally like yeah <laughs> he's just up. like no but it's like because he's loud yeah right and annoying 
he sees himself in other people and you tend to hate the people you see yourself the most in. So it's just like, it's yeah. that like, his viewpoint is, okay, this person's pretty quiet and pretty thing and he's lawful as well. So he doesn't expect any shade and he was pretty fucking open with us. At least like what Lazarin got was pretty open compared to like other people in the party who are very closed off. So he's kind of connected to that quite quickly, but he doesn't, I don't think he has much of an opinion on the moment. He's very like, also keeping his cards close to his chest about this and like just you know kind of testing the waters for certain things you know like asking him about the the symbol was very much a testing the waters of just like okay what are you gonna say and yeah. do if i show you this like what well, anything else um because obviously this whole like fear krog cultist that sets you on fire thing mm. got established in your and duke's session zero yeah. to like introduce the world and, and give you guys like a plot hook to to pursue um, and it's it's it, it popped up throughout the campaign like on your travels you've seen different like farms or remains of fires just like you know and you're like yeah it's probably them so it's been mm -hmm. like um, <laughs> a slow burn um, <laughs> I mean in some cases it's been quite fast but <laughs> yeah it's true true but um, it's cool to see because I have like obviously I have the, pretty much like this entire like in my head, I have this entire like arc pretty much worked out already. I just gotta put it. I just gotta put it on paper, um, and yeah. obviously combining it with with you know, it's it's. I can say that without people being like <gasps> shock horror that Davian has this like he needs to find these three fire gems, and he already got told in the previous session that the next gem is in Streatham, and now fire cultists setting things on fire is also in Streatham. Like there's, I can say, I feel like it's not a spoiler if I say that is not a coincidence, right? Like. It, it, Wait, it isn't? What? Nine, what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's related. Um, Next thing you're gonna fucking tell me there's a dragon there as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. it's, um, I'm very excited to, um, first of all, street them as a city or town, I'm very excited about because it's, it's very different from both Eldilon, New Daramuth, where you've also been to, to Southwold. It's very different. Oh, cool. This is um it's an industrial so, town. There's a lot of factories, a lot of a lot of um uh like raw mineral um uh, not not farming the minerals, but like like working with them, refining them. Yeah. It's kind of like that. That's so a Lazarus type of town, to be fair. Hmm? Like that's a Lazarin's type of town. Like yeah, if it's I mean, about obviously like, jewel crafting and stuff was definitely like, uh if there's you like know. refining materials, that's it's right up his fucking alley, so that'd be yeah, interesting yeah, yeah. to see. Yeah, like there's, there's, you know, most of the, my, like the mining that gets done in Keldar, so the province you're in, gets mm -hmm. done um, on that side of the province, and all gets transported to uh, Streatham to get refined there. So that's ores, minerals, but also gems. You know, you're mining, yeah. you find some fucking like, like gem deposits. You can take those with you. So that's definitely all elements. That uh, it's also a big, ta big uh, part of the um, armor and and weapon crafting uh, for both trade, but also the the military faction of of the province. That all comes from that town. So it's not a big town or like a big city, but like it's a very important town. Yeah. So it's gonna be cool to um, you know, to introduce that into the campaign and and show yeah. and show that uh, part of the um the world or this province in particular it's gonna be it's gonna be very cool and then obviously dude this whole fire shit is gonna be cool as fuck and mm -hmm. i am very excited to delve into that with you all um let me think there were some questions submitted to the dungeons like discord whoa people use um, discord. but unfortunately I cannot open Discord on my PC, so I gotta open it on my phone real quick. I mean, I can look at it for you if you'd like. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, already, I already got it. It's fine. Okay. Um, ah. So, Soko had a question for you, Koiba. Oh, my God, that's me. What made Lazarin decide to finally share things about his crest with Davia uh, instead of keeping it to himself? Um, that... <sighs> it... So first of all, it wasn't particularly going to be Davian. He hadn't just... I had decided whoever I was sharing a room with that night was who I was going to share information with. Um, it was just kind of a set of time, more anything else. He felt it'd been enough time 
Braith may have had to start talking about it. Like nothing had particularly happened, but mm-hmm. he it's a it has been a constant worry in the legend's head, this kind of thing. Um so it was all about kind of like I need to I need to tell someone. So whoever's rooming with me, I will tell them tonight. Because obviously that's someone I can tr- like that's someone I can tell this to. Um Obviously, less like side. Like I think we're probably the only person he wouldn't have told if he came to the room. But like, makes sense. It was it was yeah. unlikely. So don't know that guy. Um, yeah. Um. It was it was a lot more just about we've been in the city for a, a like couple of days now. We've traveled. It's been like like half a week or so since he's been told. Um. um let me think. You were on the way back. Right? To so like long, back, right? and that's like two days, and then it's like three. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been, been like, it's four, been like four, four days or so. Yeah, three, four days. Yeah, like, so he's been a couple of days in hotel. So that's one of the reasons why he's not been too thinking about it because it's not even been like a week since he's been told this, and obviously, like he's not seeing anything, he didn't expect to see anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but he felt then like again, he, then again, yeah, the Lazarin yeah. also knows that. Yeah, he was told. You gotta like expect the unexpected with that did, organization. Yeah, yeah exactly. they know so he, what, they know what they're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, exactly. It's that like nothing's happened, and that both comforts him and freaks him mm. the fuck out and keeps him paranoid because he's like, if he saw something, he couldn't hide from it. You know what I mean? At least then he can or track it and kind of. It's that like keep your friends close, keep your enemies close. So he'd be like, oh, I know where this is, and I can follow this path. Um, he he decided that someone needs to know that it wasn't. There'd been a lot of talk about trust as well and secrets, especially with, like the stuff with Kess and um, Brooks. Brooks, mm-hmm. like that's a breakdown of trust and like just in general, just secrets in general have been. Lazarus has been very much a a proponent of if there's something that's going to affect us, let us know now. Like the contract that you know Kess and Daigon did, he was like, let me know if there mm-hmm. is something you know. So he has that in his mind. And obviously, Lazarus is a piece of shit and is quite secretive about his own business, but wants to know everyone else's. And nope. he's playing that role. So he didn't want to tell Shereba. He's like, I gotta tell you. I gotta tell someone about this, or this is going to affect the party. And like, he doesn't know if they're gonna go to the people that he's with, or they're just him. And he knows that if worse comes to worse, he will just leave. And that's how he'll avoid the group game. He'll just try and distract yeah. and take them away like, what rather. i really like is that you've basically given me a backstory that i can just use to like yeah. leave you in a constant state of yeah you know you're 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 on your toes all the fucking time and as i've also end, given you a really good macguffin of like why did this happen oh because it was this <laughs> like yeah 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 I mean, like it's also because it's order like the yeah. idea of um there's a lot of things that I can do with this with this backstory yeah. like like hook that you gave me like oh there's That's this order what I I... there's this order that I almost became a part of but I didn't agree with them and they were like ah split paths and I was like okay yeah what if that's the first thing that came to mind was okay what yeah. if one day they decide that it's no longer okay to have loose ends like that and I was like yeah. okay what's gonna it's make really that happen because why would someone go back on there well, what if it's someone else? Word. What if someone else took over and they were like mm, yeah. we're gonna clean up some loose ends and that's when yeah. and obviously you have like your yeah. You know the 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 guy. I'm not gonna, you know, say who, what, or whatever. My connection, your connection that got you introduced to them in the first place. Yeah. Um, giving you that warning, like, hey, things changed, and they're gonna be coming for you, Uh, which jeopardizes him as well. Um, in a way, if they find out that he's been warning, uh, you know, warning you. Um, and I'm very excited because not right now with that. Like all I've done is just let Elazar know. That they're, that they're looking for him, or they're yeah. like they're they're coming for him, and that's it. And yeah, that's it's come so back, much. It's come back every session yeah. since. Yeah. And like, yeah, this tattoo or, or this fucking spider web with yeah. the sword. Um, yeah. Does does that guy that I see randomly in the corner of the bar does he does he have the tattoo? Like yeah, it's it's exactly. leaving you in this like state of yeah. I wouldn't say paranoia, but it's it's I, keeping you on your toes. You're, you're alert. It's like it's like my favorite thing to do. Like as you know, like I did it with Nicole as well. I had a symbol that I was looking out for. Yeah. That I was that was Nicole chasing it. This is something that's chasing. Yeah, my this character. is like the opposite side of and the it's, fucking It's the opposite, fence. which and it's that constant like I don't know for me. It also just gives me something that I can almost rp into of like how do i go into something like how do i like meet a new person 
well, I'm gonna go through a checklist of like, okay, what what am I looking for of this person? Like, especially with the Lazarin, who's very not gonna say like likes to use people, but almost sees a lot of people as like a tool and being that like, okay, how can I? What's like the benefits? Like, what's the pros and cons benefit cost of being <laughs> friends with this person? Or like, is it worth my time? Like, helping this person out because I'm gonna be benefit or like being friendly towards them, or is this person just a fucking dickhead and, and there's no point? Like, or are they like a child stealing my money? Like, there's no point. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna, you know, write that off. Still but heard about that urchin robbing you, I see. I'm fucking, I'm like, joking, I am purposely made it so I had like five different coin purses so it would be harder for me to be pickpocketed. Yeah, but and also, whatever pocket, pocket they put their hand in, they're gonna find something. Oh, exactly, true. But right? I was still like, just like, oh, the fuck, yeah, it's, it's that like, if I get pickpocketed, it's not as bad, but I'm also like, Aha, fuck you. Yeah, like, the thing is, if you have all your money in one place, yeah. if you get pickpocketed, it's gonna hurt more. But then again, yeah. there's a very small chance that they, you know, yeah. put their hand in the right pockets or in the right pouch of your of your backpack. If you put a little bit of money fucking everywhere, whatever yeah. pocket their grubby little hands yeah. get into, they're gonna find something, yeah. and your loss won't be as bad as if you would have had it pulled all together in that same pocket. But the yeah, you're you're gonna. It's more likely that you lose something in a, in a, in a case True. like that. Oh, definitely. But no, like overall, <laughs> like back to the the main question at hand was it was more just time and. I knew I had to tell someone because I had a feeling, I don't know, like you can you don't have to say anything, but I had a feeling the longer I kept it quiet, the more likely it was going to bite me in the ass. Like suddenly, like I think mm. if I, if I kept it quiet longer, I'm like a longer being like, if I kept quiet in another two, three weeks or four weeks, maybe even longer than that, if I didn't say anything, you would suddenly do something. I had this fear that you would suddenly do something out of the blue and i'd be completely fucked. but if i tell someone no. you can no longer like the mouth stab and then like get the fuck out <laughs> who did it it's now being a bit more crafted yeah and who better to tell the person <laughs> like it was it was great that it was like it was someone that it was davian like it was probably going to be it's the person that kind of allows and trust pretty much the most at least when it comes to information maybe not about the things he says but he's about information he knows you can trust davian with that type of stuff and also the person he knows who is, you know, alert and very much, like, good at scouting, good at s noticing things that are wrong and different. And so it was a bit of coincidence and a bit of, fuck, I need to fucking tell someone before I'm just stabbed in the middle of the night and no one knows why. <laughs> um, I got a question for you, Vincent. Yeah. From Bell, what does Sai think about the party so far? Hmm. Oh, that's it's funny because like he Sai, <laughs> so he comes in to help with the investigation, and then meets this party. And everything's fine, and then being with the party for some time, it's like you know when you go to a friend's house and like your friend is arguing with his mom, <laughs> yeah, and you're just sitting standing there like uh, awkwardly just. <laughs> That's what it felt like with the whole uh, situation yeah, with those stealing. Like, I think because you were in, you were in a tavern, right? You were always having yeah. a drink, and that's when yeah. the whole Kess Brooks thing happens. And Sai was there, and I was, so like, I was just, I was just like, well, Sai so straight up just like, <laughs> 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 just sipping his beer, just like, okay, okay, uh, I guess this is uh, how things are here. <laughs> <laughs> and especially that it's it's straight up the person he's. Like he noticed because of she yeah. because Kes is an Ergonasi is the one in the center of this, which yeah. makes it even funnier. True. It's it's pretty good. I I enjoyed that. That was so yeah. So basically, Sai thinks like, hey, he's here for he's gonna do his job. <laughs> the first impressions just that these guys are a bit, you know. <laughs> Not got, how do I uh, say this? Got, they, yeah, they got, they got shit. They got they got shit to deal with them between themselves and <laughs> not altogether organized. Yeah, <laughs> NATO. Okay. Uh, we got also got a question for Sai like, or for you, Vincent. What inspired you to play the worst best class in Five E? The worst best class. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't think ranges are that bad. I don't think they're that bad. I think they're decent. Uh, the because what I'm going for is I want to do the just like lean into the dual wielding thing mm -hmm. with the whole uh, that what was that Zephyr strike that spell? Yeah, 
like that turns me into kind of like a almost like yeah, it ups your move speed. You don't block yeah. attacks from opportunity. Yeah, it adds like a wispy feature kind of, and I I love that. I just just like I don't even care because I when it comes to classes and all that, I don't care about min maxing. I just mm -hmm. want it to be visually cool, and like just be able to do creative things with it. Like yeah. I don't really care if I'm not doing the most damage. If I'm not, I just want to. Because that's what I find fun, just doing creative things with the abilities I have and using that to to help the my party members and stuff like that. Um, question as, as well, are you using the optional class feed from Tasha's? Uh, he's using some of them. We went over yes. them because I was like, this makes Ranger a lot more fun to play combat-wise at least. Uh you were adamant that you wanted to keep the favored foe as it was like in vanilla because of your backstory and like the whole like the idea of being it being a being a giant what was it, giant slayer whatever the fuck yeah giant uh, slayer. Uh, i don't remember exactly but yeah, let me like the one that is like i do i find it poggers to hit enemies that are bigger than me yeah um, so you were pretty adamant that you wanted to keep that and not take the the whatever the fuck the Tasha's version is where you just get like, like you get to pick a favorite foe every fight that? pretty much and be like yeah oh. yeah which is yeah. which is kind of objectively better but i kind of like the the like you said the slow you burn in one the long the long thing. run kind of thing you know yeah i, mean, I, I like using that. um the other i'm pretty sure you like wonder or something stupid it's got like a weird name i right? think you, you, you you're using terrain. the one that replaces favorite terrain yeah I'm pretty sure. Yes, yes. I you think I'm using. That. I think I'm using all of them, except for the favored enemy. Yeah. Like I kept, yeah, I kept right. the the favored enemy, but everything else, I think I'm using the Tasha's uh, cauldron thingy. Yeah, I think so. I think so as well. And they're and they're very cool because I I did had no idea that you had because every time I create characters, I never the first page where you tick all those boxes. I don't mm -hmm. really pay attention to that and. Yeah. Didn't realize that there was so much shit there that yeah, you could Tasha's, unlock. Yeah, Tasha's, especially for Ranger, Tasha's cold and everything added so much, like... If, you, if you're going full Tasha's, like, Beastmaster Ranger, so what, what Duke's playing... Mm -hmm. um, do you know how previously Beastmaster Rangers basically had to choose on their action, do I attack or does my pet attack? Yeah, uh, yeah, Tasha's yeah. cold and makes it so that you can just control your pets on a bonus action and also attack yourself with your main action in the turn, which is very nice. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Uh, it also makes it so that instead of, like, taming a wild beast, you kind of, like... You summon kind of like like um how paladins summon their mounts. It's like a celestial uh, or not a celestial. It's like a like a, like it's like a, a spirit that takes the form of their mount. Um, <clears throat> uh, what 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 rangers do now for the for the beast master or whatever the fuck it's called? They like summon these like primordial spirits that take the shape of an animal, which is in this case Onu. Um, yeah, I noticed that. Either, I was wondering what summon, that was. You can either summon animal of the air, animal of the sea, animal of the of land. So it's basically there's three stat blocks, and you can just say like, so when he when Onu was a dog, that was you know the animal of land stat block or whatever the fuck. When he's oh, when he's a bird, when he's the 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 stork, it's the animal of the sky or whatever the hell. So it makes it it makes it mm. a lot more. And their spells and the access to spells, they get a lot of like druid type stuff where it's just like you're so in tune with nature that the magical understanding kind of is more aligned with druids as opposed to what it used to be yeah yeah uh, no, for uh, sure very cool very cool very cool stuff um so yeah ranger is uh actually kind of fun to play now yeah from i mean just, I, I didn't purely, even like, gameplay purely from combat rangers are so much better now with all these new optional features than they were 100%. before um i mean i didn't even realize that duke's character was a ranger i thought because i thought because he was like summoning this thing i thought he was gonna like you know the companion for like wizards and stuff mm -hmm. find familiar i thought i thought it was i thought it was that and he was like casting spells and shit i was like huh but then i realized nope he's a ranger <laughs> that's really cool i really yeah. i think that's a really cool uh the Beastmaster one is really cool it is um, fixed stat blocks for the companions are a much more balanced option for pets. Tasha's Ranger is definitely a bit more magical and less of a martial class. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I find it very cool just to see kind of the like give taking Rangers like understanding of nature more of a druidic approach than the 
I've been taught all these things and I understand these plants because my, you know, that my training and animals like me because I've been trained to tame them and make making this more of like a mystical, whimsical, I understand plants because, I don't know, I some innate I primordial understanding tells me that I do. You know what I mean? I both cool. like it and I hate it because it's kind of like, Ranger Druid had a lot of crossover, mm -hmm. which is fine, but I kind of liked it being its own... You know, it's that it's the non-magical druid, right? It's that like, yeah, I I have studied and I've done this and this and this is my understanding. It's not from like magic; it is from this. But like, it's D and D. You're gonna fucking cross over everything. <laughs> and like, I like it's more whimsical as well. Like, I like how it's a bit more like, oh, I've done this thing, but I also kind of like it. Uh, I like I like having like, the middle ground of the two almost. But just that little bit more. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's, it's I like just studying. From a roleplay perspective, just, rangers have always been yeah. pretty cool. But yeah. from a sheer just gameplay and mainly God. combat, it's been it was it's, they were ass, dude. I know, I know that back <laughs> in before all these changes, it was not good. Not a good time. <laughs> not a good time. Literally, at all. just play a fire with a bow. It's better. Yeah, but dude. Yeah, yesterday we'll talk about it now. Actually, uh, yesterday we ran a one shot, uh, the Return of the Necromancer, where uh, one of the players played uh the like fighter archetype that is all about like bows and arcane shots and all that shit yeah, very cool this one is N that this one is arcane archer. oh there you go very fucking cool mm. very cool um it's all the cool things you can do with that it's, it mm. seems really fun lower levels is not too much i'll give it that much <laughs> it's a bit uh, yeah. <laughs> um right so Last week, uh, like, you know, we've since we've brought back Dungeon Discord, we've made it a bit of a habit to play a little game. So first we had a round of Dungeon Select trivia uh, and kept the score and all that stuff. Uh, nah, then we, you know, we had the guys create NPCs and all that stuff. So now we're back at trivia, but it's more just D&D &D trivia. Oh, uh, I can't 5e, get any worse. 5e in particular. I can't get any um, worse than I did in DS I trivia. I think last week it was, it was Duke and Bell. Mm -hmm. And I think... It was what was the score? Was it seven five, seven four? I forget. I need to watch it back and actually write it down because I pretty close. I remember uh, it being pretty close. I think it was. Was it really seven? I think it was like. I think was so. Like, wasn't it only one point in between? Wasn't it like five four or something stupid? Mm, don't remember, but uh, I'll I'll make sure to to remember one, six, by next five, time. So, um, we're gonna be doing some trivia here as well. I've I've I have ten questions prepared. Oh, the way shit. the game works is I'm gonna ask the question. And you're just going to yell whatever buzzer sound you jumps to mind okay. to take the question. If you answer it wrong, the opponent has a chance to answer the question as well. Uh, if none of you answer, you know, none of you get points, that sort of thing. So with that, first question. Can a character use the help action to give themselves advantage on their next attack? A uh, buzzer, no. Correct. Damn it. <laughs> question number two. Can you split the two-weapon fighting bonus action attack with movement? Buzzer? Vincent? Oh, shit. Mm, no. You can. You can attack, Fuck. move, and then two-weapon fighting bonus, bonus action attack. You're right, you're yep. right. Yep. So, one point for Koiba, zero for Vincent. Um, which of the following classes does not have a d6 hit dice? Wizard, Sorcerer, Warlock. Uh, Warlock. It's two, two to nothing. Two to God nothing. damn it! He's okay. too good! Which spell list... And this is a multiple choice question. Uh, which spell list has access to the 6th level spell, Planar Ally? Bard, Wizard, Warlock, Cleric. Uh... Buzzer. Okay. Vincent? Cool. Mm. Fuck. I uh, don't know, but I'll just go with um, cleric. Correct. Oh, oh my god! Thirty thirty-three percent chance, baby. Woo! That's what uh, I was gonna say. I was gonna. Was, there was four options. Twenty-five percent chance. Oh, well. I was gonna say cleric, <laughs> and then I hasted because I was like, "Fuck! What if it's barred?" <laughs> <Don't laughs> sure. I was like, Fuck. "Fuck!" Yeah, I was I was hesitating one. as well. Bard or cleric? <laughs> yes, but I was like, it's one of them." <laughs> Two to one, boys. You're doing it. I'm coming back, this. baby. I'm coming back. I you'd say paladin so bad. <laughs> I was like, I know it's paladin. <laughs> Question number five. Yeah. Which school of magic is described as a school that focuses on spells that acquire information on creatures, objects, or events? 
uh, divination. Correct. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't even, couldn't even think okay. of that. Nope. So it's three to one. There's five questions left. The next five questions is all about races. So I'm going to give you... Why would you a, be a sprint? <laughs> I'm going to give you <laughs> like a brief description of a race. And you guys need to give me the race that I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I? Can we buzz in at any point once we think we know, or do you sure. have to finish? I mean, it? yeah. You can, if you want to cut me off okay. and by buzzing in, okay. you can absolutely. Okay. Um, so, question number one of these five questions: What race is described as a diminutive race that avoids notice and offense? Is it cobalt? Wrong, Vincent. I mean, I may as well guess, mm -hmm. but I have absolutely no idea. Um. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, I have literally no idea. Close. Halfling. Oh, fuck. Close. Halfling. Fuck. I, pr I on purpose left out the diminutive diminutive short race. Yeah. <laughs> well, diminutive, I knew it was small. I knew it was going to be a small race. <clears throat> um, what race embody a fusion of human civilization with the freedom of wild beasts? Wait, can you repeat that? Oh, um... Fusion of human civilization with the freedom of wild beasts. Aren't they like shifters? Or something? Fuck. I think it is shifter. A buzzer shifter. Wrong. Fuck. Okay, well then, um... Good luck. With wild be- Fuck! I feel like I know this, and it's gonna really piss me off when you tell me what it is. Uh... And I'll just have you know that if, you know... This are, is this is the literal description that D and D Beyond gives for is the races. It? No, I have no idea. I can't think of what. Just it's guess going any to be. race. Just guess the race. I mean, race. might as well guess. A fucking <laughs> <laughs> changeling. Satyr. Ah. Uh, that's what say. That's what the description yeah. for Satyr is. Yeah. Makes I, was, sense. I, I really make, thought it was gonna be makes, Shifter, bro. Makes the second said Shifter, I was like, this guy fucking knows. I'm like, this guy's got it. I'm like, he's got it. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I kind of hate that. <laughs> um, so it's still three to one for Koiba. Fuck. What race is blessed with a little fey luck and often find themselves a few fortunate feet away from dangers during adventures? Uh, gnomes. Wrong. Um, fey luck. Fey luck. Oh, yeah. Repeat it again. What race is blessed with a little fey luck and often find themselves a few fortunate feet away from dangers during adventures? There is a hint hidden in the question. Is it like... Is it halflings because of the luck? No. See, that's what I was going for. I don't know. It <laughs> is Herengon, the rabbit-like race. Oh yeah, I was, I was, I was never going to A guess few that. fortunate feet, lucky rabbit's foot. It's, I've, I've, did, a rabbit it's a, did not know that was the name of the race. Like, it's, a, it's a very like, 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 like the name of the rabbit people. I didn't, know, I didn't know this race existed, so yeah. I, I knew it was today. a thing that was coming out. I didn't know it was like, I didn't right. know. Yeah. Next one. Fuck. What race is sequestered in high mountains and evoke fear and wonder? Uh, buzzer, uh, Goliaths. Wrong. Damn it. Wolves. Also wrong. Aracocra. Aracocra. Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> fuck. And last question. So Koiba, you've won. Yes! God damn Woo! it! But you can make it you can make it three to two if you get this one correct, Vincent. I got this, I got oh, this. Oh, I can make it a four Ooh. to one. You, you don't stand a chance. I'm coming back. What race features in the nightmare of many races and creep through the shadows quiet as cats? <laughs> These are so hard. I knew the other one's so fucking. Can you say it again? What race features in the nightmare of many races and creep through the shadows quiet as cats? Nightmares of many races. Fuck. It shifters, isn't it? <laughs> it might be. So it, shift, it, it could be. Yeah, it could shifters. be changed. Wrong. Okay. Uh, is it changeling? Also wrong. Bugbear. Fuck. Um, bugbear. Yeah. I guess. There's the bugbear. I guess. I guess. I guess. Is so it that now? ends our trivia. Man, I, I was really good there. Man, <laughs> man, I knew, I knew all of the. Yeah, so I was, I was thinking bugbears. Are quite... Apparently they are. Yeah, apparently they. And you're the ones from last week's ones. Fuck, I was getting them easy. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, three to one, Koiba. Congrats. Hey. Yeah. I, yeah good job, dude. Low score, low like low point game compared to last week. But I think last week. I we... feel like last week's easier questions. I'm not gonna oh, lie. Okay, here we go, dude. Yeah, let me have it. Come on. 
Launch the fucking like rabbit easier. race? Are you joking? Yeah, you, you just hate us, dude. You're just giving us the yeah. hard questions. What I the mean, hell? I don't hate you. I hate Koiba. Yeah, so fair goes, enough. Yeah, yeah, but we're we're tw it's we're twins, so it's because it's because, he, it's because he knows I'm a fucking loser. <laughs> he's gonna give he's not gonna give us pressure of like, who's maybe missile? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, dude, it's true, yeah. actually, Duke. Um, yeah, Dream Walking humanoids, and I was like, yeah, fuck, are you was clashed off straight away, dude? Oh, it's because you're a nerd, mate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know what, dude? Stupid, Stupid fucking game. <laughs> hold on, hold on, Koiba, because you're that? about to fucking. I'm about to. Mm, I'm gonna. Okay. I'll ask you another question, and if you don't know this one, you can suck my ass. How about that? That's fine. I'll happily suck your ass. <laughs> I mean, what? Um, this race possesses an inscrutable mindset, desires, and thoughts driven by different set of basic principles than those of others. D what? What does that even mean? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck does that mean? Blue <laughs> fuck, nerds. <laughs> yeah, okay. great. No, Hailing I don't think it's distant land. Okay. Azima. No, it's not. These creatures, this race, driven by curiosity to collect interesting artifacts, gather tales and stories, and lay eyes on all the world's wonders. Tabaxi? Correct. Yeah. Boom! Nice. I just heard this because he said tales. Literally, that's the yeah. only reason why I said Tabaxi. Yeah. I got it. I mean, tales as in stories. I know. Yeah. I know. Okay, okay, okay. I know it had. I know it had nothing to do with it. It's just yeah. tales, okay. cats, tabaxi. Boom. Got it. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, Koiba, you won. Congrats, buddy. Hell yeah! You finally win something in your miserable life. I'm, I'm glad Woo! that I was able to provide you with that win. <laughs> Woo! Um, <laughs> you beat a Frenchman. Congratulations. Oh, so where's, the white, where's the white flag, dude? Yeah, fucking out with. I am wearing white. I mean. I prefer. Uh, I got this. We we. Ah, my name is what? Oh shit. Um. <laughs> right. So next week, next su next week, this week, Sunday, three three more sleeps until dungeon stuff, guys. Three more sleeps. We're almost there. Almost there. Yes, three more sleeps. I did my math right. Um, we're gonna be hitting session number thirteen. Lucky number thirteen. Uh, where it's, I mean, more than likely that you'll reach Streatham and explore that town and its wonders and also, um, start your investigation there. And, uh, I typically end Dungeon Discourse with, like, a little teaser, right, of, uh, of, you know, what's to come. I wonder. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, okay, what can I... We enter Streatham, is that, is that the spoiler? <laughs> no. I want to like formu formulate a teaser that isn't just a big fucking spoiler drop. Um, next session, if you play your cards right, you can learn some valuable but also very shocking information about your target. Oh fuck! Okay. Ooh. Okay. There you go. There okay. you have it. Mm. Uh, and with that, I want to thank both of you for being here and talking nerdy for about an hour or so yeah i uh, hope you guys had fun uh vincent it's good to have you it's good it's gonna be exciting to have you uh i'm excited for the ride for like the next uh however many sessions uh this this story this story arc takes place or like you know takes up uh Koiba. hello i'm here like, i've heard of sore losers but i've never heard of sore winners until today <laughs> you know how to sore winners man <laughs> you know what you're <laughs> I mean, yeah, because I don't watch fucking footy matches of like the fifth fucking division. Watch <laughs> <laughs> <Four shit> team right <laughs> now. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, we'll uh, catch you on Sunday for episode thirteen Bye. of Dungeon Select. Bye-bye. Later. Love you. Oh, that's so sweet. Got him. <laughs>